TJ, a great call as always. I wonder if that was in the booth or is it live? Oh, Sky TV, you wouldn't have actually paid for them to go to Hawke's Bay. It's all called from Auckland now, isn't it? How disingenuous of you. Anyway, let's let's talk about the NPC quarterfinals. Kicking off tomorrow night, Battle of the Bridge. Wellington hosting Hawke's Bay 205 Saturday. Josh Sims is the Hawke's Bay coach. He joins us. Um, when are you going? When are you leaving? Uh, we're going down tomorrow afternoon. So, uh, yeah, Wednesday. Uh, sorry, Friday at what? About 1, 2 o'clock. Yeah, okay. So, Wellington, 8 and 2. Um, and of course, I don't have to remind you that they took the shield. So, is this kind of like a, 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 a kind of a, at least a little bit of a payback game? Uh, yeah, no. I, mean, I guess I guess we'd love to have payback and, and love to win it. But no, look, we we're just trying to focus on play one more week in October. Really, um, you know, it's been the goal of the team to get to October, and and uh, yeah, playing another week would mean we'd have to beat um, the number one seed now, Paul. But um, that's just the way we've got to do it this year. Well, I suppose that it also gives the boys something else to uh, try to get their minds off that, isn't it? Because I know it was terribly disappointing. Your Shield Challenge, by the way, mate, your tenure was fantastic. It actually revived the trophy. So congratulations on that. I've never said that to you. No, and I appreciate it. And, and we had 713 glorious days with it. And, there you and, go. And, and to be honest, knowing knowing some knowing some of the Wellington boys, it was wonderful to see it, you know, as soon as they got up to Wellington, get around to, to sponsors and to public and, and, and treat it the way that uh, obviously we have. And it's really great to see. And it's it's a it's a cool piece of rugby nostalgia of New Zealand. And it's, it's great to see it uh, revitalised. Yeah, place. and just, you know, I mean, what NZR have done to rugby, well, you don't have to comment on this, but I'm allowed to comment on it. What they've done to the NPC, what they've done to these trophies is really disappointing in that there wasn't a big crowd turning up in Wellington. And I know that this weekend we've got knockout quarterfinals on. And again, you know, it's always a struggle to get people through the gate. But the importance of the occasion isn't lost on you, regardless of who's there, is it? No, absolutely not. I mean, we, the last game we had with the Shield against uh, Wellington, we had nearly 10,000 people. And, and, you know, in our, in our rugby public, which is small, it just shows how important that is to us, particularly, particularly to our provinces. Josh, is it about the best teams in the comp right now, or is it just about we've got an, a, a real good opportunity to become the best team in the comp? Yeah, I mean, look, part of our focus this year is, has been that we've never won the NPC. Um, you know, Hawks, Hawks Bay has never been the top provincial team in, in New Zealand, it's been, you know, since its inception. Um, and and so, you know, one Hawks Bay team is going to is going to break that duck and 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 be the the best provincial team in New Zealand at some stage. And, and uh, this year, we've you know, we've focused on why couldn't it be us this year? How good is this Wellington side? Eight and two. That's been impressive, mate. Yeah, very good. I mean, look, they've got they're a bit like us. They've been revitalised by some some guys who probably didn't make the All Blacks and wanted to. Um, and then obviously, there's a whole lot of ex All Blacks and a whole lot of great first class and and a whole lot of great Super Rugby players amongst them. And you know, that's from one to thirty really. Um, so they're pretty pretty big beast to deal with. You know, I, I was hoping and I was talking to Ian Foster on uh, Tuesday. We had him on the show, and uh, and when I say I was hoping, look, one of the questions I put to him is that you know, about this idea of a concept of a bolter. And I'm going to ask all coaches this because, you know, to me, if the NPC can't throw up a name, a guy that's playing so well that all of a sudden he demands the attention of the selectors. And I'm talking about your man, Tyrone Thompson, who, you know, we've got a couple of older grunter hookers and I'm not, no disrespect to Dane and Cody, but, they, you know, they aren't going to be there forever. We've got, obviously, um, Tokiaha who's there, but your boy. I mean, the potential of this player. Talk to, talk to me about him. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Tyrone is a phenomenal talent. Um, and I don't think one that's been missed. I think the Chiefs really stole a march on the Hurricanes there, you know, getting him. Um, but, of course, he's got up against a Suffer or more, who, who yeah, is another, yeah. phenomenal, another phenomenal hooker that, that isn't in a black jersey at the moment as well. So it'll be a hell of a battle between those two boys. And is he, and is he, is he aware of this? I mean, do you talk to him about it? That how you know the future is right there, man. You just keep training hard, believing hard, and that you know you know what's you know, potentially available for you. Yeah, my, I, I sometimes I think these young guys don't realise how how close things are, um, and how you know three months of three months of really really great consistency of be, and being a professional can can really jump you in the ranks um, and, and get you into these spaces. And and, and look, and I think. We've got a new All Black coaching crew, so to speak, and 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 I guarantee you that those guys will be looking at those extras and and, and looking at those other players. And hey, I don't know how big the squad will be that goes to the Northern Hemisphere, but you've also got a New Zealand A team yep. as well, which yep. is going. So it'll be fantastic to see the sixty or seventy best players playing at that stage and 
really um, that'll create a bit of a scrap come Super Rugby in, in January, February. Josh, some assistant coach of Hawks Bay with us in Hawks Bay away at Wellington 205 on Saturday. Um, can Canterbury, uh, can, dumb question for you, I suppose, but can Canterbury be beaten? My God, you know, I know Taranaki upset them, and I suppose that's the warning that they needed uh, if they'd gone 10 and 0. I mean, they probably seem to be bulletproof, but they're not. But God damn, they have a good side, aren't they? Yeah, no, they are, absolutely. And, and look, we. You know, we were up with three minutes to play down there in, in Christchurch, uh, and like you know, we got them on the back of their storm week, which probably helped us. But oh, and I think the the one glorious thing about this year's competition is probably anybody can be beat and be beaten by anybody. Um, and so I, I, look, we're we're you know we're confident that if we get things right on our end, we can we can win three games in October and and be that first. Uh, first Hawks Bay team but I think equally everybody else is probably in the same boat including you know Northland as well who who can beat anybody. Well yeah that's I mean and also their attitude and the way that they play I mean if anyone can upset an apple cart it's those boys and it? it's just a great looking quarter finals mate you start tomorrow with the Battle of the Bridge and then you lot away at Wellington, Canterbury, Northland, Waikato Bay have plenty I mean there's plenty of spice in that one too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, you know, yeah, the added spice is that, you know, first, you know, whoever wins those games crosses over for, for the semi finals. So, you know, the chances are we're playing opposition we haven't seen and haven't played very much against if we do qualify. And it'll be a whole challenge into itself. You love this time of year? Uh, love. Um, yeah, no, I mean, certainly enjoy it. Obviously, you, you work. You work pretty hard in a, in a very truncated season to, to get the best things you can in for, for the guys when they come back to you with a couple of weeks' preparation. Um, and, you know, if you get the opportunity to play in October and play finals footy, you, you just hope things fall your way and, and, and the guys fulfil their potential and, and you get to play another week. Josh, see, when you say that, I mean, I'm just starting to think about that as well. It's like, you know, you've got a, a year-long job packaged into about two and a half months, haven't you? Pretty much, yeah. When, it, when it's all said and done, when... You have the Pacific Cup of Nations and all-black test matches and Super Rugby going deeper and deeper. You, you know, we, we have a three-week pre-season of which we're lucky to see the guys for a week of it. Um, and then, of course, you've got to try and put it all together for round one and you have a storm week chucked in amongst there because you've got to, you know, you've got to squash it all up into the 12-week package and, and all of a sudden it's all done and dusted. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is certainly, it's a, it's a marathon and, uh, sorry, a marathon squeezed into a sprint space really and it's, it's the best you can do and, and uh, the boys, you know, understand that and, and, you know, being alive coming in October now is is the whole goal and you know we've just got to have the best 80 minutes we can on, on uh, Saturday at 2 o'clock So for a guy like yourself does it pretty much mean that this overtakes and envelops your life completely for that period does it? I can't see how it doesn't Yeah you you have to ring my wife to ask that but, uh, <laughs> yep, pr- Well you've got to pr- go and meet her pr- first you send smooth all that over don't you I'm much. home honey I'm home Yeah no, the, the, I mean, the one thing I do know is that there's some very long lawns at home that are going to take a hell of an effort, hell of yeah. an effort to get under control once we do finish. But uh, I'll be happy to see them grow a few inches higher over the next few weeks. Yeah, go on. Year and and uh, get, them, get them with the weed eater later. Well, look, I tell you what, I just think that, you know, yourself and your team, you make New Zealand rugby proud because you are New Zealand rugby. I, I, I know what I mean by saying that to you. I hope you understand what I mean by saying that as well. Yeah, no, we and absolutely we appreciate it. We, we are a, a bunch of, of provincial players from from uh, from Hawke's Bay and around New Zealand who who love playing this game, love playing in front of our fans at home, and and uh, you know we, we don't take the the national provincial championship lightly. We we think it's pretty important. In fact, you know if we if we like to say it, it's probably the most important competition in New Zealand, and and we certainly make sure we give it that uh, that stature.